but he's inting it. He's gonna get bursted. What is up, guys? And welcome to the Beyond Standards channel. My name is Shanks. In today, we are on the map Westworld for a 1v1 video commentary between two great players in a great matchup between Isengard and Mordor. I mean, first things first, this is a Mordor map, okay? Westworld, here, Mordor is a beast from the east. Because you have one, two, three, four, five settlements in total. It means you will get in total 25% food bonus, which makes your structures cost way less. And keep in mind that orcs are for free too. And question will move from the Uruks attacking the orc pit. He might be able to destroy it, yes, he will destroy it for sure. But, but in the meantime, orcs are taking over the map. And now without the war chant, this Uruks can't fight the 1v2 situation. And the opening from Isengard was Furnace into the Uruk pit. So the Orc pit is a Gunners, that's 100% certain. But the Uruks will take a lot of damage from the Orcs in the tower. And he will be able to get one more Orc out just in time. During all this time, Mordor was able to capture this, 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 <laughs> this, and almost this one too. And this one too. I mean, this guy will be super rich in this game. Isengard has only two settlements outside, Mordor has all the other settlements under his control. And the orcs will, you know, chase you, that means this Uruks, badly damaged, won't be able to deal any more damage to the economy from Mordor, and he will just be able to replace the orc pit, which is by the way now very cheap, only 300, he will go for the orc pit number 2 now, and the tower is melting those Uruks. He's bringing more Uruks to Mordor. But remember what Boromir used to say, one does not simply walk into Mordor, not even the mighty Urukai. I mean, that's an int right there, you know, he's inting those orcs, they will not be able to do anything against the tower without the Eye of Sauron. And Isengard has the advantage that his units are stronger in a one-on-one -on -one situation and they are faster. But the problem is, there is not going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation anytime soon. Orc pit number two, orc pit number three, and orc pit number four. I mean, this is going to be Mordor totally unleashed. Mordor actually performing incredibly well on the patch 2.2 against every faction. I mean, that is not a bad matchup because the maps we have in the map pool of the 1v1 battle arena are actually favoring Mordor quite a bit. We have Fangon Forest, West Emnet, Westfold, Higurashi Forest. All of these maps are actually quite decent and great for the Mordor faction. And look at the minimap, boys. He has a Uruk pit level 2 now, that means Berserkers will be a good choice to counter the Orcs, but look at the base from Mordor, and now look at the base from Isengard. There is a huge gap in the, you know, in the economy department, the slaughterhouse here is going to be destroyed now by the Orc warriors, no problemo. In the meantime, Uruks are taking care of this lumber mill, they will be able to take it down. They need still a lot of experience to get level 2, and I believe this last spot is going to be saved for an eventual troll cage, which is good. Because trolls will give you uh, the safety ness, but usually you don't need this in this matchup. You can just straight up rush for an Asgul, which Isengard can't deal with anytime soon. And trolls will, you know, cost you the troll kitch will cost you 1080, but also the trolls will cost you a lot because you have not the full food bonus, as you have only three slaughterhouses inside the castle. You will have to pay more for the tro trolls. But they are good when you are afraid of a potential blade rush, which won't happen in this game because the Eisen's eco is not looking too hot. And he has almost a power point for industry, which will be for sure quite helpful. Alright, Orcs level 2, quite dangerous. They will unlock the passive, which is the Black Orcs. They will deal 15% more damage. Industry has been used by the, by the Isengard player on this level 2 furnace. That's going to be quite helpful. He's cash looting also a bit. Should be filling up the bees as soon as possible. And what you also need in this matchup at this point of the game is definitely Lourdes. Lourdes will be needed for his leadership. You need to actively try to level him up to level 5 to be stronger with your army. Remember, you will have to deal with lots of trolls and Nazgûs and witch kings. And Lourdes' damage leadership is quite helpful in those situations. Berserker against the Orc Warriors. Take this. They have the splash damage too, they can hit multiple targets at once, and they are one of the most unique units in the entire game. And there is a dog who is not afraid. I am not afraid! <laughs> okay, I mean, the Berserkers are also faster than Orcs, so running away from them is not a really great option. You might also just stand still and fight, but remember, when they are out of combat for a bit, they will also start recovering their HP. 
and that's very important too because berserkers are actually not very cheap they cost 220 each they are more expensive than the uruks but their recruit time is quite fast from a level 3 uruk but you can get them out on the field in only nine seconds when you have money you can outspam your mortal opponent with one Uruk Pit. You can outspam his two, even three Uruk Pits. Because all of them are still only level 1 and he needs to wait for 30 seconds to get those Orcs up on the field. Many, many Berserkers around this location and Isengard, with the help of the Berserkers, actually being able to reclaim some of the map control. And yeah, this Lord is on the field for the Trolls. The, the troll is a mean one. He will hit him once. Oh my goodness, the damage is crazy. Now, Lourdes has to be careful right there. But remember, he has always the cripple. He can cripple the troll in the worst case scenario. And it will deal a bit more than 50% of his HP. So here, maybe it's important to cripple him. But I think he will try to get away without doing this. Berserker here has to be careful. If outpost control from Mordor, that's going to be the first outpost. And Isengard was able to take the outpost at the top side. Building two battle towers around this location, and they are quite beefy too against orcs. And what you can also do now in this version of the patch 2.2, you can garrison these towers. You can actually put crossbowmen inside of this tower, this tower, and also inside of the outpost citadel. That means you have triple archer here. They will melt everything that is coming. Orcs will have a very hard time to deal with this. Barzaka killing those workers will be able to. Defend this lumber mill, but he needs to also replace some of the workers. Orcs on the hunt. Level 2 orcs, a bit different situation. On the land, they have also more armor. And the Berserker will be taken down. In the meantime, Lourdes is creeping quite a lot. He was able to creep the troll there in the middle. There is still a chest on the field, which Isengard should be taking. He will take the outpost around this location. And there are no archers inside the tower yet. So, but it's good because you can block this pathway which is pretty good, and damage the orcs as they are trying to come from this location. What you could also do is go for a Uruk pit here at the outpost and keep pressuring this area non-stop, you know? Outpost control, double furnace into the tower. So Isengard is actually coming back into the game, but Mordor has a lot of money as we are talking. He has actually almost 8,000 in the bank, and very soon, my friends, we will see the leader of the Nazgûls. The Witch King will be recruited. In a bit. I mean, they are not dealing too much damage to the structures, the orcs. The tower is quite tanky against swordman damage, but more of them are coming non stop. He has no units inside the tower, unfortunately for him. Should be always garrisoning this with the crossbowman, but he's going for the upgrades now. And industry, again, being quite helpful in those situations. He has outpost. Here, eventually, too, with the crossbowmen, he's leveling up them to level 3. You need to get them to get the immunity to fear effects, which means the screech of the Witch King or Nazgûs or the Drummer Trolls roar ability won't be dealing any damage. Lord is exposed, and the Witch King will eat the Uruk hero for breakfast, okay? Remember the screech? And the orcs with the Eye of Sauron and the Witch King leadership was also kicking in there for a bit. Use Palantir there, by the way, and Palantir will also grant you resistance to fear. Witch King will get chunked, but there is not enough damage to kill him, to burst him, and he will just fly in safety. The outpost here, now without the tower being around, will be exposed, and the orcs with the leadership of the Witch King will take it down easily. This is the power points from Isengard. He has four, almost five power points in total. Beautiful hit with the Witch King, killing all the crossbowmen behind. I mean, he's a tanky boy, you know? Everybody is complaining that Witch Kings and or Nazgûls are not very tanky, but they are not supposed to be tanky because their only weakness are fire arrows and arrows. No other unit can attack them. Tower finished, but the problem is there are too many orcs, so you need to two shoot, shoot them twice, each of these orcs. You can't one-shot them, and as there are too many of them, Witch King getting chunked. Now he needs to be careful though. But in the meantime, look at this. We have four Mordor Orc combos without the Drummer Troll, but they have the Witch King leadership. And they have also Darkness too. Isengard has no power points yet for the Freezing Green. There comes a Tainted Land from Mordor into the Darkness. So they have now on this land 35% increased armor. Witch King gives them 50% damage and 50% armor. And Darkness also giving them 33% damage and also armor. It means don't underestimate them. Orcs. With this much leadership are still very strong, but the Witch King is going to get chunked, but just barely able to survive. 
Lourdes, not level 5 yet. They are having crazy leadership. This army from Mordor is going to use the Carnage. Carnage gives you splash damage too, but I think he was moving way too fast. The Carnage doesn't go off. And goes on cooldown. And I don't know about this one, melee fighting these combos doesn't seem to be the smartest idea. And what you definitely need in this matchup, especially on this map, are Warc Riders, okay? Imagine if like two battalions of Warc Riders here with the Forge Please and Heavy Armor in War Chant, you can easily defend against those combos of Mordor. Easily. The Zita has been taken down, but there comes the counter to the darkness and to the existence of Mordor. The Freezing Green has been available, has been unlocked. In the meantime, the outpost top is still remaining under control from Isengard, but again, there are no garrison towers. This outpost, he doesn't even rebuild it. The tower is badly damaged and will be taken down. Now, Mordor is inting those units, not even fighting back. He will lose them. And Lourdes barely was able to survive all about to hit level 5. Outpost control from Mordor. This is uh, bugging out, by the way. This <laughs> spot there, he can't use it. And, you know, Lourdes pretty strong. Once he's level 5, he will also have a much easier time to deal with the Witch King. So now, the Mordor player is actually buying banner carry upgrade on each of these orcs, which is pretty smart because it's not very expensive. It only costs you 212 because he has some furnaces inside the outpost here. And each furnace will give you the steel bonus, making your upgrades cheaper. And it's quite valuable too to buy the banner upgrade on them because they will get level 2, they will get stronger, stronger naturally. And they also additionally to that will unlock the black orcs. So the orcs actually getting the most benefits from hitting level 2. So they have like much more benefits than like Uruks, crossbowmen, soldiers or peasants. He didn't use the Palantir, he will use the Palantir now. But he lost a couple of seconds of damaging the Witch King. He wouldn't die, but he would get damaged way harder. We have bunch of orcs. The each of Uruks might be over, boys. The each of the orcs has come. <laughs> Plenty of orcs. And here you need like massive killing army, which are definitely the walk riders. You can trample them and you will burst them down in a few seconds. Alright, the orcs are coming, Witch King keeping the distance but always giving leadership. Witch King's leadership area is quite big. So he can stay there where he is and still give leadership to all these orcs. Now the attack from Witch King is incoming but he's gonna get chunk, 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 chunk. But remember, there is no drama troll leadership from Mordor and there is no Lourdes who was getting level 5 but he died. So Isengard fighting without leadership on the land from Mordor. He just covered the land and that's pretty good too. In the meantime, the outpost is under attack, but I think he's misclicking. He should be destroying the tower first, which will be enough to defend the day. Uh, Mordor was in the meantime able to claim this outpost for himself. Now he has double outpost control and 50% of the map is definitely under his control. Mordor's money should be pretty much unmatched. Troll Kitch up on the field now. You need three more trolls to get it to level two which will give you the option to recruit the Drummer Troll, okay? Drummer Troll will be recruited from this, but you can also go for the second Nazgul, for the third Nazgul. You have plenty of options. His command points kept. He has too many orcs up on the field and can't produce any more units anytime soon. So he's waiting for the darkness, which has been used before the Freezing Rain. That means he has a window, a time window, in which he can get stuff done, okay? Slaughterhouse is getting bursted down. Huge Isengard army though. Now we have up Saruman upon the field too. That's pretty good. Lourdes is all about to be revived. He has like long revive times with level 5. You need to wait 2 minutes and 30 seconds for him to come back. Which is pretty long in a fast moving game like this. Outpost at the top will be destroyed. But in the meantime, Mordor is going for a counter attack. So you, wanna, you don't want to trade outpost for your castle. But if this army comes to your castle, you will lose your castle. Your freezing green is on cooldown. The army is pretty powerful with the Iosauron plus Darkness plus Witch King they will melt through everything that you get that you have even a level 3 furnace doesn't stand a chance and he knows he needs to retreat he's coming there okay no level 2 on the orcs and um, you don't get the resistance to fear but you get still a huge benefit of damage and armor um, Witch King can't approach this now with this much leadership. They have also leadership from Saruman, but he's inting it. He's running it down. He's running it down, but Witch King is going to run it down too. He's going to get bursted. Too much leadership with the, with the Lords. Lords is in the front. Mordor could attack him, but he's not focusing the Lords. He would die in a few seconds. In the meantime, the Orcs are inside the base of Isengard, taking care of every single structure. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can officially see it. The age of Uruks is over. The age of the orc has come. Orcs everywhere. 
and still dealing heavy damage a level two furnace will be destroyed remember these are very valuable high valuable structures you can't just replace because every structure you will lose and try to replace will be level one it needs so much time to get to level two level two gives you way more money compared to a level one structure so keeping those level two level three structures alive is essential for the lead game because in lead game you need much more money than in early game you need to get uruk pit get this get this it's 600 you need to give them banner heavy armor fire arrows these are so many upgrades and each combo battalion will cost you so much money you never garrison these towers which would be actually a pretty valid strategy in this oh be careful lords but we have 17 power points for mordor and almost only 12 power points for terminator the isengard player because he went for the devastation too right devastation means minus four power points so it would be 16 versus 17 so it's pretty even in the command points department when we consider the fact that isengard also went for the tainted land palantium and devastation usually you don't need this you can go this 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 but in in this matchup you need also palantium because that's the only way you can get early resistance to fear otherwise you can't get it and uh, lourdes leadership the uh, pillage leadership is pretty good in all situations you get money for killing stuff you get three for each orc and remember you need to kill thousands of orcs now he's being you know once again surrounded the nazgul not very tanky with war chant and lord's leadership they will deal 110 percent more damage and the nazgul will get one shotted saravan is back in the business still level five combos are recovering in the base isengard suffering a little bit he has only one outpost under his control, Mordor is three. He's gonna send some Berserkers to the outpost, which has no defense. Witch King's revive time is quite long, four minutes in total. So if you lose him, you will revive him for free. But the time... Boom, chakalaka. A Maya versus another Maya. In the meantime, Isengard will lose this fight big time. There are too many units up on the field. Balrog is inside the jeans, boys. And he is attacking... The Orphank, the Orphank, seen as an indestructible structure, doesn't stand a chance against the mighty Balrog of Morgoth. And here comes the Breath Fire. His breathing fire, ladies and gentlemen, the dragon of Middle Earth taking over the game, showing the dominance of the late game Mordor on a map like this. I mean, there was not a single minute of the game in which Mordor wasn't controlling this game. Isengard is a counter to Mordor in the lead game. Mordor playing the game without catapults, without too many throws, and pretty much playing with Witch King, Darkness, and Orcs with Orc combos. But still enough. 19 power points for Isengard. He has the power points almost for the Balrog too, but the problem is, if you have to use your Balrog defensively, it's a not very good situation. Witch King chunked from the cripple, but Lords might die over here. There is not much left that can shoot down the Witch King. Witch King just can ignore all of that and go for the Lourdes. And that's going to be his plan. He's actually getting still chunked. Because quality beats quantity. Remember, there is a level 5 combat battalion and level 4. And they are pretty deadly in those situations. The castle of Mordor, I mean of Isengard, is all about to be destroyed. He has only two outposts under his control. And he has no money left. He has Badrock available now from the spellbook, but I don't think that's going to change anything. Because he's too poor, and he will end up losing this castle for sure, and he has no money to rebuy the castle. I mean, Devastation has been quite helpful, of course, you can use it over and over again, but Mordor, once he has the Call the Heart, which he now can unlock from his spellbook, uh, he will just lose all his army, click one button, this one, Call the Heart. Increased production speed of Orc Pit, Haradrim Palace, Mumma Kill Pan, Troll Cage, and Siege Walk by 175%. It's a very busted power point for the Mordor lead game. Because you can reproduce all your units, which is kind of like a great counter to Isengard too. Because Isengard's Freezing Rain is only affecting the army which he currently has upon the field. But you can get a new army with the Call the Heart. Build me an army, Worthy of Mordor. And Mordor saying Westfold is mine. And he's indeed able to dominate the Westfold. Whereas there is one wizard that stands between the victory of Mordor and the defeat of Isengard. 
a level 3 lumber mill, all map beside this settlement over here and this settlement over here. And he will leave the game knowing that he can't turn this game around anymore. Mordor dominating the map Westfold. GG, well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.